Brenner. Uh, Mick's behind the camera, so I may call you Mick at some point. My name's Dave. I'll be running around your caravan with you. We've already hooked it up to go to our transport guy, so there will be a jockey wheel, which will be attached, which is in there at the moment. Um, you want? I'm guessing you guys have probably had a van before. Your DO35 for pin, I'll show you where we've got that. Make sure you take your handbrake off. You've got a breakaway system. If this pin pulls out, your brakes will activate on full and your tail lights will come on. Hook it up like we've done here, so if something catastrophic happens on your car, your van will stop on the road. Where you'll probably use it is if you haven't put your handbrake on, you take it off your car and it goes to roll away. That's when you yank it out and your van will stop. Um, your gas bottles are both full, so leave that pointing at the one that you're using. So in this demonstration, it's that one. If you do that, you're likely to forget, use this one that trip, that one the next trip, and all of a sudden you run out of gas on both, and that's not a cool thing. You do have an outside tap on this side. Make sure it's off. If it's on, you can drain all your water, um, and then you've got no water left. You've got taps on the other side for your slide out kitchen. We'll get into your toolbox in two seconds because Rocco needs me. <laughs> Sorry for that brief interruption. Um, that's all the stuff you need to worry about at hookup. Turning off your bottles, make sure you're attached, make sure you're unattached, stuff like that. All of your keys I've got in the locks. Because you guys are getting it delivered, we're gonna lock everything as we go anyway. So you know a nice big storage box there, whack a generator in there, do whatever you want to put in there, spare esky, cut some holes in it for the dog. And what you'll find is that the keys for the toolbox are the same each side. Any of these black locks, the keys are the same each side. Any of the silver style locks, it's a different key, but it's the same as each other on the silver side. Silver side, hmm, hungry now. What we've got on this side is your jack. It's the heavy duty trailer mate style jack. So it's got the little bottle jack on top. Use it to change your tires, that's what it's there for. It'll locate onto this point on both sides of your van. Get familiar with it. Because then at three in the morning, if it's raining, you know how to use your jack. You're not trying to read up on it. You've got a stabiliser leg handle. I'll show you where they go. You also get a tyre brace, which is probably easier than using that at the end of the day, because you can just whack it on there and spin it around. That's your DO35 pin, and it's handle to put on your car. So make sure you put it on nice and secure. That's all going to live in the front boot, which is all going to be locked. Easy peasy, now don't get in. Now, your hot water service, it's a gas on demand system. The only time you ever need to get in here is I'll do it before we go today, I'll physically turn it off. We need it on because we're gonna run some hot water inside. The rest of it is purely in there for maintenance. You blow it out with your air gun if the spiders have got in there or something. You're only gonna look in there though, yeah, if you're doing any maintenance. You got an outside shower down the bottom here hot and cold. Perfect for washing your feet, washing the dog, cleaning your boots, coming back from a swim, stuff like that. Up the top, the white one is your TV antenna, the black one is your radio antenna, and this is an external antenna source. If wherever you are gives you access to a TV tower, because you're out in the boonie somewhere and the picture's not real good, hook into that. We'll talk more about that on the inside. Lotus give you a 12 volt access point on either side of your caravan. Effectively to hook your um, little compressor up so you can check your tire pressures. Before it leaves today, I'll make sure they got 50 in them and I'll check the tension on your wheel nuts to 120 newtons. It'll save it on your paperwork. Um, fridge vents, keep them clean. Squirt in there with a the hose, you're gonna have problems because you're getting the back of your fridge wet. If you wanna give it a good clean, take the panels out, Get in there again with your air pressure, give it a good clean out. The bugs do like it in there too, because it's nice and protected. That's just something to keep in mind. Your tank fillers, um, whack the hose in, fill up your water tank. It's as easy as that. If you're not doing them, leave them locked. We all have those dodgy mates at the footy club who like thinking that's funny. Down here, you've got access to cut off your water tanks. So if I shut the back one off, I'm now only draining water from your front tank. That can be useful if you go going bush bush and you need to conserve your water. It can also be useful if you need to swap some balance around in your van so you can fill up the back water tank, not the front one, which will alleviate a bit of tow ball pressure. 
You've also got your mains pressure inlet down here, so you can just hook up the hose. If you're gonna use your tank water, it's important to remember you've got to turn your pump on. If you're gonna use the hose water, it's important to remember to leave the pump off. You don't need the pump on if you're hooking up the hose. Up under here, this white one, is where your grey water comes out. There's a big red handle up the back here, you crack it open. So any water coming out of your shower or your hand basins or your kitchen goes into your grey tank and then out. You'll probably drain that more often than not, but it is important to close it off, especially for storage, so the bugs can't look. Now we're coming back to that panel, but I'll just show you a stabiliser leg while we're here. Take the weight, pull the handle, drop it down. Use the star brace or that long handle to wind that down. It is only there to tension up your van, so it's not rocking around. If you use it to try and jack up and change a tyre, you will strip it out and you can drop the van on yourself, so don't. Use your jack if you're changing the tyre. You may not use these a lot, because they're just there to stop it rocking around. That depends on how comfortable you feel. Now, we're back up in the, in the real world. Your toot. Little green lever up, brings your cassette out. To empty it, unscrew that, push the little button, tip it out. If you've got this cassette out, you can't physically open your toilet from the inside, so no one can make a mess in there anyway. But leave your door open, because it's obvious where you are, if somebody's looking for you. You do have a little drag handle, so you can wheel it through the caravan park. The main tip with it, make sure it locks back in, and use the chemicals. Using the chemicals doesn't get anywhere near as bad as you might expect it to. That one's now locked as well. That's pretty much the utility side of your van. One thing you will want to get used to when you're playing with stuff is you've got lights, which is the lights everywhere. You've got lights on the front, you've got lights on the side to hook your power cords up. Get used to which switch does what. Oh, shiny. Jerry can holders, do not put petrol on them. The cops don't like you having petrol on the back in case somebody runs into you. You've got a big light on the back here as well. Again, get familiar with which switch does which. And your spare tyre is a mag, so make sure you lock it on there. You can get the firewood basket that bolts into the back. They've already got the spacings in it. So you can order that direct from Lotus if you want. Um, and then you've got a firewood tray on the back. Around this side's all the entertaining side. So you've got your drop down table with a little whiskey light. Really good to set up your collection on there. It's also good if you're going to use an electric fry pan because you're at a caravan park for a change, you can plug it into there. If you're trying to bring the TV out, you don't need to bring it. You've got all the accesses here. You can put your swing arm straight into that. You've got your 12 volt source and you've got your antenna feed and the stereo feeds out of your stereo. You can access your stereo from out here as well. Where it'll catch out though, is we're on the radio, I can adjust the volume out here. So I don't know if you're here on the video very well. Or I can adjust the volume inside and outside, or I can adjust it just on the inside to wake the kids up. If I turn this off out here, it's turning off the entire stereo system, not just outside. So whoever's inside is now going, where's my tunes gone? Um, you do have 12 volt access, so you can charge your phone out here as well. And it's all on your entertainment side, so it's all the fun stuff. Your big outside speaker, your 12 volt, effectively using your uh, little compressor again. Now we're getting to the real fun part of your van. Up the front end on this side, so we'll just jump for a second. You got your cold and hot tap for your pull out kitchen. Of course, you can use that as your normal taps if you want to. You've got your bike rack up top, and we've got your fridge. Now, way down the back, which you probably can't see, is where it plugs in on an Anderson plug. So that's running off. Um, I haven't got it on because I haven't got any beer to put in there effectively, but it's a Waco fridge. Instructions are inside for it. Knock yourselves out. We'll turn him off so we don't want him to be on for travel. And I can't remember which key I put that in. That'll be one of those keys. So that's now locked up so the transport people can't get into your fridge. Up under here is a gas outlet. So you can access your gas without having to access the gas bottles. Up in here is the fun stuff. 
you get your whippy kitchen. So that'll be in like that for travel. Nice and shiny. Underneath here, which I won't get you to come down and see, is your gas hose that just clicks out. Because the gas rules in South Australia, we've got to make it fit your bottom, not your bayonet. You can change that on your end. You got your water hoses. They pull out of these two. So you just screw that into the end of this and then onto your taps up there and you got hot and cold water on the outside. So you probably use the outside kitchen more than the inside at the end of the day. Make sure they're cold before you shut them down because they do get really hot really fast. And latch it in. If you happen to get your hoses up the wrong way, you're just going to go cold for hot and hot for cold. It's not going to make too much of a difference. Now, this is the bit that you want to get right. All right, now, your awning makes you look cool when you pull up somewhere because you can remember how to hook things up and you know how to join your TV on, how to open your cupboards, use your kitchen. People will come over for a look -see. If you're getting this wrong though, they'll gravitate you like seagulls to a chip. So try and get it right. All you gotta do is loosen off this thumb screw down the back. Now it's just loose, not undone, just loose. With the same hand, squeeze together a little bit and slide that out the way. So that's the front end done. Do the same down here, loosen, slide out the way. The reason I've got the hook is because I'm not quite that tall. Pull that down. Swap it around, grab your strap. Step back for the length of the hook. Pull out your hook. What you don't want to do is walk off that distance because all of a sudden I'm over here and who knows what I'm tripping over. Once it's down, slide these arms up and they lock over this pin. So flick it over, do up that screw. The breeze has now got it. Lock it in. If the breeze happens to come up now, your awning's not going anywhere. The handle's got the locking pin in it. So just crack the handle, free hand above, slide it out to whatever height you like. Do the same on this end. And once you're up, if that's a little bit loose, just loosen your screw, pull it down a bit, and tighten it up. Wrap this strap up around the end so it's out of the way. If you guys get walls made up, the canvas walls will slide in there, or shade cloth, and it slides in from that end. Uh, shade walls will just hang off of these, so measure them to fit. And canvas ones, they'll put a anti-flat bar in it and potentially a curved rafter across the middle, so you can build yourself a canvas roof. Part of that would be a skirt that goes across here, which is not a bad idea to stop the breeze coming under. If you needed to, you can stand your legs up. It's just a matter of pushing that in, pulling it out, and stand it up, because then you peg it in. If it's gonna be windy though, leave it connected to that. If it's gonna be real windy, put it away. Now, putting it away is pretty easy. Make sure your strap's got access. Loosen that off. Bring it down. Now, you can do it by yourself, but there's two of you can. Do it together. Loosen them off. Bring it down. Now, push that button with your finger rather than pull it. Push it. Slide that all the way down. And if it's already breezy, you're leaning on this and looking around the world. Just stops it flapping around like that. Whoever's down this end's got a little bit more to do. Same thing, loosen, push, slide. Make sure you know where your strap is. They'll tell you to put it in the middle, and that's great, but it's a bit hard to do, let's be honest. We're here to make our lives easy. Bring it in about a metre from the end, stand on it with your left foot. A little bit of tension. When I lean over now, I can push that switch, and there's no pressure on it, and I know where the strap is to wind up. And up you go. If I've forgotten to grab my hook, I've got to climb up in a tire or something, which is never that cool. Once it's up, lock it in, do it up. Lock it in, do it up. Put your hook away, don't leave it lying around anywhere, because then you haven't got a hook. Now what I'll probably do before we drive off today, is I'll just put a couple of cable ties around that because it's going all the way up to the territory. We don't want it cutting loose. Normal travel, good to worry about. So 
So all of your outside keys in the bag here, they'll be in your top drawer. Now the door, before we jump inside, always use the keys to lock or unlock. This handle will disappear when I go to lock. If someone tries to break in, they're going to break that handle off. Make sure it's out and it's just a gentle flip. Handle up is how you separate your doors. Because then you pin that one open and you've got that one shut that you can still lock. Now we can jump inside, Vicky. Trainer, Trainer. All right, we're inside your van now. It's gonna be a lot less noisy from the knuckleheads walking past. Um, and this is some of the important stuff. But of course, people can't see what happens in here. So if you forget something, it's not that bad. The big white switch turns off all of your 12 volt power inside, except for your fridge. The brown ones or black or whatever color that actually is, turns on your lights around the place. So have a good play with them and work out which light's doing which light, because there's no particular rhyme or reason to it. This box here is where the rest of the brains of the operation happens. So your solar controller works all the time. Even though we're under a carport roof here, it's registering we're getting some in. Your water tank monitors, fresh water, we've filled it up. Adelaide water though, and your grey tank, it's empty. Keep an eye on it, especially if you're free camping so you can still have water. If you run out of beer, you can turn that on and off. This one's your gas hot water. These are your 12 volt fuses. If something overheats, it'll pop it out and then you just push it in and work out what's not working. You've got three switches down here. Aircon, obviously isolates your air conditioner to be off. Fridge, turns the 12 volt of your fridge off. If you're plugged into a caravan park, it'll still work all right, and your water pump. The important part of this box is all to do with your water. If you're gonna use your tanks, turn the pump on, make sure that red light's on, because then your hot water's gonna activate when you want it to. And if we turn the hot tap on, this screen lights up, it says that it's pushing water through, the gas flame comes on to say it's getting hot. It's already creeping up, 41, 43, 45. So it doesn't take too long. The trick with it is don't go flat out hot. It has a tendency to lose temperature so you can't burn yourself accidentally. Just back it off a bit so your pressure's better. The pressure's a little bit lower, you'd hardly notice it and it starts creeping up again. It's an on-demand system, so you can use as much as you like. Um, you just gotta be wary of the water that you're using or not using. If you're hooking up to the mains, leave that pump off. But when you run the tap, you'll notice you're still getting water. If you've got the pump on, you're trying to draw water from both things, the pump won't like it, it'll start freaking itself out, so leave that off. We'll leave it on for now, and as you can tell, your hot water's now shut down. If we turn that little switch off outside, which we will, the red light won't be on. So you're not gonna get any hot water. You still get water coming out, but nothing else. Now, your fridge, it's a nice big fridge. You can hear it coming along in there. There's a little picture here that shows up just to indicate that it's on. If I tap the button, it tells me we're on maximum cold, we're plugged into power, and there's a couple of other things you can do like auto fans. If we lose power, being a compressor fridge, it'll show the battery symbol. If I've turned that off though, It'll never go to battery. So you go to drive off, your fridge is gonna get hot. So leave that on. If you tap the button, it gives you options to change your temperature or go into the background settings where I can tell it that I wanna put a kitty lock on, which is then a double click to turn it off. I can turn off the audible alarm, which is not a good idea either. I wouldn't waste too much time going into, oh, it's very flicky. Into the user modes, because performance is the best option. Silent, eco and turbo, yeah. Turbo is if you've forgotten to use your fridge. Oh shit, I better get my beer cold before we go off. You can hit it on turbo. When it's done, it goes back to performance anyway. But yeah, silent and eco just has a tendency not to get real cold. Make sure you turn it off when you're not gonna be using it for a while. When you do do that, swing these little puppies out because it holds your door open so it doesn't get moldy. That's when you want to make sure you've turned it off, which is purely a matter of holding that button in. Now, because you know, it's just been on, there's no, no funkies in there. I've now turned your fridge off, but I'll leave it shut for travel so it can't do any damage anywhere. Storage options everywhere. It's bloody ridiculous the amount of storage they put in these things. 
Um, all we'll effectively do now is we're going to work our way around your van because if you your fridge, it's a compressor fridge. It's either on or it's off. That's all you got to worry about. Your hot water, it's on or it's off. That's all you, you don't have to worry about it. If you re remember how to put your awning out, you look cool at a caravan park and pack it up when it's windy, you haven't got any problems. The rest of it's easy peasy. Um, your table and chairs, there's a lever here to allow it to disco around on you. So you can change the way you're sitting in here depending on who you got in and what you're doing. This big cushion is the infill cushion for the top. So if you were making this into another bed, you'd pick which way you want to shift your table, forward or back, push it down, which is this button. It'll then go down by getting that out of the way. And once it's down, it locks in. Then you put your cushion on, but be aware that you've got a gap. So either a milk crate or something height equivalent, um, because if the table was that long to start with, you'd never get into your seat, of course. To bring it up, it's just a matter of hitting that button, and up she comes. Now, while we're in here, we'll get that out of the way for a sec. Under here is all your power. So you've got your two batteries, your two 40 volt battery charger. That shuts itself down when it's full, wouldn't waste your time on it. If you smell burnt eggs coming out of here, it's not because you've been burning eggs in the kitchen, as your batteries could be toast. You do have storage options. Pardon me. But be aware that you've got water hoses to your outdoor shower, you've got power cords and stuff in you. Sharp stuff, not so good. Hiding the Christmas presents, maybe you get away with it. It's more important that you know where it is in case something's not working for you. Oh. Now we'll rebuild. Oh. So of course, if the kids are getting their Christmas presents, you can hide them in there and they'll never know because they're sitting here excited. Now we're just going to tuck that in there so it doesn't go anywhere for transit. These funky little lights, first tap is blue, hold the button in, goes to white. So blue is just a mood light so you don't trip over the dog, white's if you want to read and stuff in here. Um, around on this end of the bedding, let's just get the table back out of the way. You've got your interior. Stereo controls, it'll take a while to fire up, so I've just hit it now. Um, you got light switch options, you got your power options. So these are your 12 volt, they're a little spinny disc. Um, you've also got stereo controls up here, same as the outside world. Seems a little bit ridiculous that you can get to there to there, but hey, I'll just show them off to you, I don't have to make them. Yeah, your telly, I think we're still on Dr. Phil. This is your rooftop antenna. I think if Mick looks up, you can see it through the roof. By pulling this collar down, I can spin it around to get a better picture. When it's time to pack it up, right, line up the peaks and wind it down. I don't know if you can hear it, but you hear it come down on the roof. Where we are, we might have still got picture, but we haven't because where we are. And the radio's just finally kicked in. Get used to your remote. So you can retune it. You'll have to when it gets to you guys anyway, because we're picking up Adelaide stuff. Um, we're not allowed to travel with it up here, so we'll take the whole bracket off. If you hook into an outside antenna source, turn that off. Somewhere and the picture's not real good. Hook into that. We'll talk more about that on the inside. Because then you can just leave your antenna where it is and it'll pick up the tower rather than your digital rooftop antenna. Now, that's going in the top drawer where your keys are. Where I'll take your TV off in a minute, I'll put it in the box in this cupboard. So you know where it is when you're looking for it. All right, I'm sure you guys have worked that stuff out. These drawers are really cool because they've got extra locks. So you can lock up valuables in there and people can't get into your stuff. The cooktop, it's a gas cooker. Pick which one you want, turn it on, hit the magic button. You're cooking inside. You do have a range hood up the top here. So if you are cooking something a bit smelly, got the curry going, you can get the vapors outside and keep the rest of the world happy. Um, you've also got a light for your oven, of course. And we like to leave these strapped up because a lovely load of people give us the straps, so we might as well use them. Always check for heat before you shut the lid. So I'll just leave that up for a bit now so it's not getting hot. Into the bedrooms for the kiddies. Three bunks, they've all got the fans. You can fold this out the way if you need to, obviously just mattress up and fold it in and you got your ladder. We're just going to leave all of that tucked in, that shouldn't travel too far. You've got your washing machine in there, 
240 only, so you've got to be plugged in to use it. Um, and it's a washing machine. I'm not going to bore you with a washing machine. Which way are you spinning, Mick? I'll go this way. Yeah, you got your shower. Leave the plug in unless you're having a shower. It'll stop any smells coming out of your grey tank come up. And if your grey tank fills up, it'll come out there anyway. And it's not a good idea to leave that up for travel because it can bounce off. Um, where we're going to put it is down on the floor so it can't go anywhere. You've got your normal roof hatch with an in and an out fan. So you can change which way you're blowing the air in there. Make sure it's shut for travel. Make sure that's shut for travel so your door can't bounce open. Now Mick's going to try and turn around so we need to have a look at the toilet. Now, you can spin the lid so you don't have to sit with your knees against the door. When it's time to use it, open the lid, open the cassette. That's attached to your cassette, so if it's not there, don't use your toilet. Once you're done, the blue button, will, the middle button will flush, as long as you hold it down. Once it's flushed, close it. If something's not right, it'll tell you. The cassette's missing. You can't sense any flush water. The tank's three quarters full, the tank's chocolate, it's time to go. So pay attention to it, keep it clean like a normal toilet. Your slidey door, make sure it's bolted for travel. Resist the urge to bolt it across this way when you're in here. Because if something happens, I'm in a very small room and I can't get in and can't get out. So if you've got the door shut, just let it do its own gravity shut. You don't have to worry too much about it. And we'll shut down all the lights in your bathroom as we come out because it's just a general idea. So you don't have to turn it off when you're packing up. Now, your air conditioner. Use the remote, we've got it on 16 because it's hot outside. Um, anything you can do from here, you can also do from the screen. So if I want to turn it off, I can just wake it up and then turn it off. If I want to turn it on, I can do the same thing. Tap the magic button and it will turn your air conditioner back on again. So if you have lost your remote or you've taken the batteries out to feed your TV remote, you can still turn the air on and off. You can shut down some vents if you don't want to go to the kiddies end or not, or open it because you do. Uh, it's pretty much up to you guys. It's an air conditioner. Hot and cold, of course. Roof hatches. If you're worried about the sun, shut that one. If you travel with the fly screen, it'll have a tendency to build up a sag. To open it, flick these latches, pull the handle down, push up. Really useful if you pull up somewhere it's hot, crack your roof hatch, all the hot air goes out. You can still shut then your night blind or your fly screen, keep the bugs away. You can latch it there to let air through or you can latch it nearly shut to let just a little bit of air through, but the bugs can get in still. So make sure you shut the bug screen. For travel, shut it, shut it, shut it. More lights in there you know what to do with. For you guys, I'll leave that shut for transport. Um, windows, might as well pick on this one because that's now cold. Up, down, open them out. And then you do that up to wherever you want your window to be set and then you can still do your blind or the fly screen. When it's time to travel, shut, 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 shut. It doesn't really matter with these whether they're up or down. So set them where you want. Um, Sirocco fan, really easy. You set it wherever you want. You can pivot it, you can twist it, you can do all sorts. Speeds on one side, timer, two, four hours, six hours or eight hours before it turns itself off or you just go through your speed motions to shut it down. They are really cool. Get it? That was my dad joke for the day. Hardy ha. Hardy ha, says Nick. Um, we're nearly there now, I think. We do have a positive pressure hatch here. The theory is if I'm driving down the bitumen road, this is gonna fill up with clean air pressure inside. So no dust can come in through the bottom of your door or through your inlet over here. You then hit the dirt road, of course, dust can't come in because the air in here is greater pressure. People get it wrong, they pop that up when they hit the dirt road, and of course, dirty air comes in. They're really good if you use them properly. So do a bit of research and make sure you know how we're doing it. Um, I think we're there. 